I would cover myself in feces and make you try to arrest me. I, I, that's how far I would go on this. You're the most vulnerable. <laughs> By far. You I, outside yeah. of that vehicle are the most vulnerable person yeah. in that interaction. Pray for them. <laughs> They're gonna need it. Pray for them. When I'm trying to control your movement, it's because I'm trying to lower the amount of stress I'm under so that I'm not trying to leave you at the mercy of my split second decision making. Right. So. What is going on, on the internet? Welcome back to Only Cops. I am Josh, this is Bill, and we are going to show you another Officer's React episode. Today, what we have on the docket is, uh, what's it called, Switched? Breaking Barriers. Breaking Barriers. And uh, this is a show where they decided to take police and civilians and have them trade places. So we're going to go see uh, how this testing environment was and try to give some feedback from Can't wait. police officers. Can't wait to see civilians handle police interactions. <laughs> And, and I'll preface this. I, I think what's unfair about this scenario is one of two things. One, uh, the civilian in this instance is completely safe. It's a training environment, so it's very hard to simulate the real stress and fear of doing the actual job. Also, what's working against the civilian is they have none of the training or the experience that most of these police officers that are dealing with. I will say this, rookies are not that much better than regular <laughs> uh, civilians. However, you see a lot of it. I, I think it's, unf it's, it's kind of like comparing... You know, you know, the center and the quarterback switch places. Like, yes, do they do both play football, but they have very different jobs. And all of their training is so, like, to a certain extent, I think it's a good idea from a make them show them how it actually feels to do the job. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's not a terribly fair comparison to show competency. So I want to give a little bit of leniency to the civilians in this instance because they lack, like I said, the training and the experience. So, I don't give leniency. He goes, I don't give leniency. I've been talked to. Oh, 100%. In some oh. terrible ways by civilians. 100%. So. 100%. Oh, that clearly went poorly. What happens when you switch the roles of police officers and civilians? Well, today we're going to find out on this episode of Switch. Let's go. I'm already going to tell you right now what they're not doing is getting them, like, constipated from eating a bad meal. <laughs> yelling at them for a few hours and then making them look at social media for days on end that are talking shit about them. Maybe under that context, I believe it. But know what it's like to be in the day in the life of a... But I will say this. I, I do like the scenarios, but... It's, it's, uh, I'm going to give some credit to police officers that they're not fully contextualizing yeah. the experience. We'll keep going. Forces like, what tools they have at their availability, but at the end of the day, we're gonna put them in the shoes and allow Ugh. them to make their real life decisions. Yeah, simulation suck, every dude. Day. So At stick around like as warm. you guys watch this That's episode true. of Switch. That's true. Simulation's really suck in the cold. Yeah. What we wanna do is we wanna kinda go over some of the use of force protocols that we utilize in law enforcement or an officer uses anytime they use force. And so today we're gonna to be utilizing simulation rounds. Trevor, go ahead and explain to us sure, what if they don't have any firearms training, they also don't have that. Scenarios. Yeah, simulation yeah. round is kind of an overriding term for a paint projectile uh, out of a firearm used for training. And these are UTM rounds. Look at that. Training munitions. Radio, Radio dude, yeah. Radio that's rounds, cool. It, uh, projects a cartridge uh, at a distance that's filled with paint. So when you get hit, you feel the impact, you hear the gun being fired at you, and then you can see exactly where you're hit. Uh, they are quite painful, so you do have to wear some protective gear. They can break skin. They can put your eye out uh, and do they, injury they if, if you're, if you're unprotected. <laughs> but that's the whole Especially learning part of it. Because... Shot at by SWAT you know officers. What? Pause it. I will say this. I was about to say, we were in academy, and when we had to do force on force, we're getting shot SWAT at by SWAT officers. guys. Like, not cops. No, no. Like, guys that do nothing but, like, like push-ups, power cleans, and shooting. SWAT yeah. officers <laughs> who were so good with these simunition guns they could shoot your fingers that weren't covered by the glove. They could shoot that part of your finger when it was 40 degrees outside in a big concrete range. Yeah, it was pretty Hurt bad. like hell. Yeah, hurt. Because so, your gloves only covered like the top I'm, knuckles I'm gonna, here. I'm going to walk back. They would back. shoot. Yeah, I'm going to walk here. back a little bit of the leniency I gave on them because yeah. we had just as bad a scenario yeah. given to us where the skill gap between us and who we were going against was just as fast. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'll think, okay. Also, these aren't like uh, de-escalation scenarios. These no, are like that's true. That's force true. on force. Yeah. Like, So let's see how they do. Yeah, good luck. So we got a few people out here. Uh, Trevor, Miles, and then Sed is on his way. So we also have some police officers out here. The show is called Switch for a reason. So we're going to switch. Them. You know, you <laughs> They're going to need it. Pray for them. 
have so much pent up frustration. Yeah. If I was asked as a former police officer to run one of these, I would 100%. be the biggest of trolls. I would be there. I would cover myself in feces and make you try to arrest me. I, I, that's how far I would go on this. I'd be, oh, really? You want to know what it's like to be a cop? <laughs> I don't know if I would go that far. <laughs> I would definitely have fun shooting you in the face. With a or, simunition or, round. Or just being like really disrespectful, and the second they say anything back to me, that's it. That's a lawsuit. Yep. Yeah. Wow, you're a real piece of shit. Yeah. I'm going to go tell a guy that's like grew up in a, in a poverty-stricken neighborhood that he doesn't know what it's like to be yep. me yeah. <laughs> because he's just a racist guy. I love it. You're really getting into this now. I can tell. I'm here for it. Let's go. So this is what we're going to do today. So you are just pulled this vehicle over for a vehicle code violation. They gave him PC. what you're going to do is you're going to walk up and it's contact Mr. Martin. They need a lit, like, door. yeah, they need help. He's going to be sitting down. You got a good so detention. got expired registration, asking for his driver's license, insurance, whatever you need. Have dialogue with them. All right. Jar, uh, so the key bunker. things to remember, mm -hmm. obviously yeah. you got your radio if you need to call for backup. You have a taser right here. Back if you need to use a taser, bro. pull your taser out of him. Say taser, taser. Okay. And then he'll know to simulate either being to a successful taser deployment or not. You have a baton here. So you can pull that baton out. It's the same out. baton we use. Yep. use baton Those things hurt. Against him. It's soft, so it's not going to hurt him. And you also have your firearm. Pause it real quick. The other problem is, and I don't know if they conceal whether they're armed or not, is as a police officer, you have no idea. <laughs> There's a lot of unknowns that you don't get versus in this training environment you do know. At least you have some idea. He didn't tell me he was armed. Oh, well, there you go. Well, we'll, guess we'll get I that. didn't hear him say anything yeah. about him being armed. Shout out to them for he that. He said it was just a traffic stop for registration and to have dialogue with him. Cool. All right. Didn't touch the bumper. Hmm. Hey, how you doing there, What sir? an animal. What's up, Didn't touch anything. Hey, uh, how you feeling today? I'm, I'm doing fine. What, what, what's going on, man? Uh, the reason why I pulled you over, sir, because you had expired tags. Man, my tags are not expired. Okay. Uh, I just paid them last week, boss. Heard well, that. sir, you don't have the current heard tags. That. What, year, what year is on there? Uh, you have 2000... 2021 on there. Sir, you have 2019. Ooh. Man, I took Real care expired. of that. Though. Okay, but sir, can it's I get real. your driver's yep. license and registration, please? Man, you know what? I don't know where... You know, I was at a rush and I was leaving the house, man. And I, you know, I was just trying to go to the store and get something for my wife. You know, my daughter's not feeling sure. good. Sure. So, okay. You know, I don't know where my Okay, that sir. Hand, uh, if you don't mind, can I just have you keep your hands on the steering wheel, please? Wait, didn't you just ask for my driver's license? Yeah, you're, you're right. I did, sir. I apologize. You get it verbal. Bus. You want my driver's Do it license? verbally. How about this, sir? Can you just give me your name? Ooh. Oh, my guy. High speed load drag civilian. My license. Here. Okay. Because now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a so, certain kind of way. Do you want me okay. to keep this my hands here do you want me to get Sir, go ahead and get your driver's license for me, please. So you said you were going to the store? Yeah, man. You know, you guys get it. You, you, you kind of stop people for no reason. And, stuff, uh -huh. and then you get us a little nervous. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. sir. Well, it's you know, okay. I, it. I got it somewhere in here. I okay. just don't know. Oh! Oh, <laughs> officer ah, damn hit! It. Officer hit! Officer oh, hit! Oh, he's mercilessly killing him. He now. dropped his gun, I yeah. think. <laughs> oh. They're all laughing. The other ones are laughing. Back, yeah. Hey, good luck. Oh. You're up next, my guy. Yeah, dude. His gun oh, fell out of his yeah, chest <laughs> ring. Oh All right. How you feel, bro? Brother, I'm, I'm gone. I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And sadly, as funny as it may sound, but sadly, bro, that is a reality for some police officers. We're Let me ask, trap, is huh? there anything 100%. else that you could have done that you think you could have did better on that? Get him out of the car. You know what? I thought I, uh, I don't think there's anything I could have did different. I mean, I thought I had a good view on his And hands. to be honest, um, unless you had a backup officer or did a passenger side approach, you would have never seen have it. Done anything different. Yeah, yeah you would have never mean, seen it. And as quick, I mean, as quick as that draw was, he was pointed and it had already cranked three rounds off yeah, before, before the guy even, even flinched. Yeah. Before he even realized it was such a... And what's cool, and this one's shady, just so y'all can know, and this, this is part of get you into, the, I guess, call it criminal mind session here. He lulled him into a sense of safety by guilting him about not telling him what to like changing what he told him to do. Yeah. And that is absolutely a tactic somebody that wants to do you harm will do. That's pretty smart. They'll shame you for doing what you're doing for safety. They'll shame you and try to convince you you're doing it because you're racist or yep. you're whatever. If it's for safety, it's for safety. I don't care if they don't agree with your reasoning or not. You're doing it for a reason. And had, 
Had the game been, the rules of the game been, you keep your hands in the steering wheel, and if you don't keep your hands in the steering wheel, I'm going to point a gun at you. Yeah. You might give him one on that. You better. it's kind of a stressful thing. Yeah, but you need a good reason to 100%, be making demands like that. 100%. Like, but, like, it, it's, it, you, and you can't know because it's, it's registration. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's a, a felony, felony warrant, warrant or whatever it is. Plate. Yeah, totally so, different. like. There's very small things you can do, but ultimately you're at the mercy of, of, of people for the most part, and you were definitely behind the gun on that. But I, it, it... I want to see more people get shot. <laughs> I like we'll it. We'll keep going. Those sim rounds hurt, dude. They yeah, hurt. I, I tell you what, if it did not hit him in the vest, that's they see. You, you know notice... he was aiming for around the vest. Yeah, but like you'll notice he has a glove on one hand, but not on his drawing hand because yeah. getting shot back in the hand it hurts. Yeah. It is not a pleasant experience. I bet he came around that car and pop, pop, just a couple times. 100%. Just Get him in, like, the fun. leg? Yeah. The fat part of the leg? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Like your hamstring? Yep. Yeah, they hurt. Um, and I didn't really, I just wasn't expecting him to pull out like that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Okay. And, I mean, like, just thinking about it, like, he was in the glove compartment, but then he had all the papers, so then the papers was, like, a distraction. And so yeah. the, the firearm, I think, was on the side. So I'm thinking he's grabbing for the paper, but then as soon as he turned, I thought he was going to hand me the driver's license. But he handed you a ticket to Jesus. Did you, did you ever see the gun? No, I didn't see the gun. It was too late. And then the thing that bothered me the most is how I fell down. He definitely so put a few more on him. Oh, and that, dude, was a, yeah. that was a kill shot right there. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things when we talk about to officers, we're training mm-hmm. officers, there's this phrase that we call stay in the fight. Mm-hmm. We say that because all the time. Because at that moment mm-hmm. in time, when you're on the ground, you're now fighting for your life. Got a stupid radio in his hand. Yep. And there is, you can't <laughs> sit there and just kill over. Because sometimes these suspects, they don't they care. Kill you. They, are, they are trying to bring the yeah, fight. Yeah, they're, they're there to kill you. So at that moment in time, when we talk about being prepared and always having a plan in the back of your head to respond, it's for moments like that that cause you to get up, look around in your surroundings, and get back in the fight. There's so many different aspects of a video. Yep, yep, for shame. Realize. What happens Sake. if there's four people? <laughs> hey, look, look, That's girl, why they so moved the, the camera reveal. angle. Yeah. The big Show reveal that. is this. This scenario actually happened in mm-hmm. Las Vegas. A state or uh, an officer, a uh, Vegas metro yeah. officer, was doing a stop on somebody. He was actually talking to a guy in a lifted truck, and the, the suspect, just like said, did was distracting him, looking around, looking, yeah. reaching for yeah. stuff, fumbling, yeah. and he pulled a gun out just at that officer oh, and flipped that it, yep. just like yep. he did in this scenario, and he shot the officer in his lung. Now, gratefully, they were able to drive that officer to a local hospital and save his life, but that, ha- that actually happened fight? in Vegas. Yeah happens what instantaneously so the amount of trauma that this poor civilian guy here is experiencing we had to sit in an academy and watch like hundreds oh yeah of we videos had, we had a full week of cops dying we, we had, had that full one. week was a guy like a damn m14 that he yeah. not only shoots the cop he then runs up on him and finishes yeah. him off and you have to listen to this guy scream for like three minutes they didn't yeah. let us stop it some of the corporals had to leave because they're like, I can't listen to this shit. I'm going to act like I've done the thing. And yeah. I can't. We had to sit there and listen to this man plead for his life as a guy finished On the radio. and M14 yeah, in him. Ugh. Them streets are a brutal fucking... It's a very different... I, I can't express to you, if you've never experienced that much danger in your life, how much being in that environment changes you as a person. And the fear of it. It's real fear. Like It's not like me being worried about aliens coming. It's like... I click on the news and I get to watch an officer that was on duty at the same time that I was get shot at or listen on the radio while I'm hearing another officer get shot at or getting beat to death or something crazy like that. Get hit by a car. Getting hit. We just had an officer recently in our, in our department that got hit by a car. And every single time you put on your stupid reflective vest and do whatever, it's very real for police officers and it's ever present. No matter what, it's ever present. So... It, it's as much as he's a little shaken from that. Imagine experiencing that all the time, except it's people that you know, and they yeah. name they name streets after you. Well, and imagine and doing another traffic stop after that. Sure, like right after that. Yeah, I I, I remember we we'll, we we'll, we'll, we had an officer get shot at. Mm-hmm. We hear it over the radio. Bill and I, like idiots, go take on like we're gonna go make it our responsibility. Sure did. And they gave us a description for a suspect vehicle. It's within. Two blocks, three yeah. blocks of mm-hmm. where the offense, to, and there's a security officer got shot, yep. and three other officers got shot at, and we had to stop that car. Knowing full well that these people were already okay with shooting at cops, had already shot one, we have no idea the disposition, 
at the time of that security guard and yeah. hey this is your car and on, yeah. and the guy ended up not being involved right but there was also but we had three, his life in our hands the whole time three people in that car yeah so anyways now it, granted that traffic stuff was a little different sure because sure Josh and I got out with yeah. rifles pointed well, at a and, car. And I got a lot more PC than yeah. your, your taillights yes. out or whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. A little different. So but. It, but, but all I'm saying is that the stress is there. And I think that a lot of people are like, why are cops afraid they're the people in power? It's like, bro, you're the one with the biggest X on your back when you're a police officer. And it's, it's, not, it's impossible psychologically to avoid that feeling. And post a lot of the way that the media portrayed a lot of this stuff and, and the political conversation around law enforcement has really intensified that feeling. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, whether you have that animosity or not, they're experiencing that because a lot of the, the political conversation has infiltrated people's minds, and now it's hard to avoid that conversation. And a lot of that so-called power goes away on a traffic stop. Do you? Yeah. You're the most vulnerable. Yeah, by far. You I, outside yeah. of that vehicle are the most vulnerable person yeah. in that interaction. Yeah. You don't know if this is an old lady that's just chilling or an old lady looking to smoke a cop. Yeah. It's totally a thing. I don't know. It's a very strange It's a very strange dynamic. I, I, I don't miss doing it. But I, I, having been on both sides of the fence of that, yeah, it's a scary environment and this is a taste of that. So in an instance, it's good. I think it's a good experience for them. Is there anything left in this clip? Uh, I think they're probably just going to debrief a little gonna bit. going to debrief them? It's well, like I, I want to hear what he has left. to say. They, they went to the trouble of doing it. I want to hear what they have to say about it. So what am I supposed to do in this scenario? So he's not presenting the driver's license. Have a good relationship so what am I with Jesus. To do? Yeah. You have to investigate and figure out why. You want to control him as much as you can. <laughs> so the moment I would recognize somebody's kind of stalling, at that moment in time, I'm going to say, you do me a favor, keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times. And then I'm going to get their number. Just tell me, or get their name. Tell Verbal. me your name. Tell yeah. me your date of birth. But Verbal keep your hands on that steering wheel. Because now I can go figure you it out. You did that initially. You did. So remember, yeah. you asked my name. And then I go, look, do you either want my name or my driver's license? Exactly. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Shamed so about now it. when you realize mm -hmm. somebody's acting suspicious, you want to be able to control it verbally as much as you can, letting them know don't make any sudden movements. Because the moment you start making sudden movements, that tells me now that you're trying to do something else. Yeah, shout out to them. I think it's a pretty fair assessment yeah. on what's going on. Obviously, these guys, some of these guys are cops here, right, that are hosting yeah. the scenario. But it's the reason why cops can kind of feel like assholes. We talked about this off, off camera for a little bit. It's like, hey, telling somebody you're not allowed to move in your own house sounds like a real dick move. But it's like, hey, man, the danger is very real for me. Yeah. I have no idea who you are. The city knows I'm here. The city knows my name. They know where I live. They know that I was the officer dispatched to this call. So if something shitty goes down here... I'm wearing this no matter what. Yeah. You might be able to shoot me in the face and leave, and they have no idea who I'm dealing with. So when I'm trying to get you identified, that's the motivation behind it. When I'm trying to control your movement, it's because I'm trying to lower the amount of stress I'm under so that I'm not trying to leave you at the mercy of my split-second decision-making. Right. <laughs> so thank you uh, for hanging out with us. That was a really good scenario, mm -hmm. actually. That's, that's a pretty realistic... We got some, This is pretty awesome training. That's a pretty good... Uh, it's a good traffic stop. It's a very... Like, you. I probably participated in well over a thousand of these things, mm -hmm. whether they were mine or backing somebody on somebody else's. And then doing it at and night. And in training. Yeah. yeah and doing it in training. And way worse. If they had done this exact same scenario at night. Oh, could you imagine those windows? Those there's a back whole other level. You're having to hold the flashlight now. You're doing yeah. this whole nonsense. It's complicated. Yeah. Even as a back, it's hard. You're like, hey, Sometimes you need to it's down. worse as a back. Yeah. Because then you're under a Because you're bunch. like. Yeah. You don't really care about the verbal interaction. You are just yeah. like, is Eyeball. there anything that resembles a weapon? Yeah. Especially at night. So, um, anyways, it, it's a good scenario. I, I'm glad these people got to experience some of this. You get to kind of open some eyes that these guys went to the trouble of hosting this type of thing. Um, but uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Like and share this with other people that you think might appreciate this as well. Uh, if you guys are super interested in what we're doing, you can join our Patreon group for as little as a dollar a month. That gives you access to our Discord. Our Discord is where we do like all of the things. Mm -hmm. You guys get pretty much 24-hour access to producer Juan, Bill, and myself, and the you rest of the people. You can even troll us. Yeah, you can troll us a lot. <laughs> Actually, more than time. in the comments. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. You want to know I see it and make sure that I'm the one seeing it? Go join our Discord. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyways, that that's how we also decide on the two days a week that we go live. Uh, we do Tactical Tuesdays, and on Thursdays on 7.30 Central Standard Time, uh, we typically do body cam breakdowns of real police interactions as opposed to simulated ones, uh, and we get to interact with people there. So um, until next time, thank you for riding Two Man with us. Peace.